purpose of this video is to analyze situations in which an object's mechanical energy is changed by friction or a specified externally applied force. So that the difference between this and the previous examples is we've always thought of energy as being uh, confined to a system and it cannot leave. And now we're introducing the idea that uh, not only could there be an externally applied force, but there also could be uh, mechanical energy being converted into other forms of energy via, say, friction. Friction um, creates heat, and heat can be another form of energy that doesn't show up in our mechanical forms of energy. So, let's look at this problem. You've got a 4 kilogram block sliding a distance 5 meters along an icy slope at an angle 30 degrees. Coefficient of friction kinetic is 0.2. How fast will the block be moving when it reaches the the end of the slope. So we have a 30 degree angle here. This is sliding down. It's going to end up here later. And we want to know how fast. So now that we have a picture, um, it's always a good idea with these things to draw a free body force diagram. We'll get to that later. Okay, since uh, we're dealing with energy, let's do our energy steps. We've got the picture. Let's apply the law of conservation of energy. And that says the total sum of energy initial has to equal the total sum of energy final. This still holds true for when energy uh, is converted to non-mechanical forms, but we have to keep in mind that we're going to, uh, to lose some energy, and when I say lose, it just it's transferred um, into heat or something else. In this case, we start with gravitational potential energy, um, and what are you going to do with that non-conservative work? Well, what happens is it ends up being taken away. It's a negative value, um, and when, once that is added negatively, it will be um, subtracted from our total. So we're going to lose some work to friction. We're going to lose some heat to friction um, as we slide down. And in the end, we're going to have some amount of kinetic energy final. Okay, so let's apply our formulas to all of these. The gravitational potential energy is expressed mgh. Uh, work is expressed force times distance times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. And then kinetic energy, of course, is one half m v final squared. Right, now let's take a closer look at this f right here. Well, we know that's the force of friction, and that's on our diagram. Uh, that has to be friction equals mu times normal. But then normal force has to be equal to the component of gravity perpendicular to the ramp. So that component of gravity perpendicular to the ramp is uh, mg times the cosine of theta. So it ends up being mu mg cosine theta for your force of friction. So we have to plug that all in here for f. So let's rewrite this line. We'll say mgh plus mu mg cosine of theta times the displacement times cosine of theta again. Uh, that's a different theta, so I should denote it uh, differently. Why don't we just... Let's take care of it right now. We know that the distance traveled is 5, and it's cosine of 180. All of that equals 1 half m v final squared. Now, again, we're solving for uh, this term v final. So we have to get that term by itself eventually. Um, let me revisit the other side, uh, cosine of 180. It's just negative 1, and that will make this entire value negative. Hence, we're losing 
mechanical energy to heat. Um, and also notice that you have m in every term, so simply dividing by m will take care of that. And if you want v by itself, you're going to have to multiply everything by 2. That'll take care of all of that. Running out of room here, but in the end, you're going to have uh, v final equal to the square root of all of that that's up there. So 2 times the quantity gh plus mu g cosine of 30 times 5 times negative 1. Cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2 times 5 times negative 1. Mu was actually given as 0.2. We know all the numbers. We can plug them in now. So 2 times 9.8 times the height. Well, the height, that's a tricky one. I'll go back over here. Too. We dropped a different amount than we traveled downward. We traveled downward uh, 5 meters so the amount that we fell downward is going to be um, sine of 30 times 5, which ends up being 2.5 meters. So that's what we're going to have to plug in here, is 2.5 meters. Now all of that, remember, we're going to add to um, mu times g times cos this term. So mu was 0.2 cosine of theta was root 3 over 2, and I have to add another term in there for g. That's lovely. And we get a final velocity of 6.4 meters per second. Okay, now you try one. Pause the video and click play, read the problem, click play when you're ready.